Welcome back, everyone. Got some great news. Got the manifold back. Look at how much shorter that is. Uh, this was a total pain in the ass for him to do, but he still did a decent job, I think, with the welding. Uh, it was this area back here where it was a pain to get the torch in. Um, so we got our wastegate, wastegate, sorry, wastegate back, and we have our manifold. I have a fresh exhaust manifold gasket. All the hardware is right there. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the car so that I can start mocking stuff up for the last time, and then hopefully by the end of today slash this video, we can uh, permanently mount. At the very least, this, probably the turbo and wastegate too. We'll see. Okay, so manifold is loosely installed with the gasket because I'm probably gonna tighten it down. Got the wastegate here. Let's just find out. Oh yeah, a lot more clearance than we had before. So I'm happy with that. That's as high as it's gonna go up anyways. But yeah, that, uh, that really makes a big difference there. They probably only moved it up about half an inch. No longer touches the bracket, I don't have to cut anything, so. All right, cool. So, that means I can go ahead and tighten this manifold down, hopefully for the last time. Okay, so now that this is mounted, I'm over here fiddling with the wastegate tuner. Uh, we're running boost by gear, because we have boost controller, so. Went ahead and put the fittings on here, put the top fitting there. They're still loose because I don't know if I'm actually gonna keep it there or not. It came with these little plugs for the other air holes because we only need one on the bottom. We don't need three total, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, this wastegate is also water-cooled, which is what these ports are for. And so if I wanted to run water cooling, I could, but I don't think I'm going to. Seems like an extra hassle for, I don't know. I just don't think I need to run it. Um, Anyways, we're doing 10 PSI because it's boost by gear. So that is the black and red springs together. He's walking up. I don't know if you guys can see, he's pretty far away. He just rolled out of bed. He's a lazy fuck. <laughs> yeah, the uh, manifold's mounted permanently. Permanently? Is there yeah. a screw drawn? Yeah, it's how, done. How does the waste get fit? It's good. It's we got space now. We have about almost an inch clearance from the cable. Nice. And it's like it's more tucked back a little bit too, so it's not. Yeah. I know. It was a pain in the ass. He was telling me how hard it was to get the torch in the back. He was like, "Dude, I hate you." <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, saw so we got some new subscribers. So if you guys just subscribe. Welcome to the channel. Um, yeah, we're just trying to build this car. So like, if you like that kind of shit, you know, enjoy it. <laughs> all right so we got it back together unfortunately i have some explaining to do i am dumb but you're gonna have to bear with me because this is my first time turboing anything so essentially i thought there was a seal missing from up here but basically that's what this does this is the seal so i'm just stupid and uh drove all the way down there fabricator thought i was talking about this i already have this and he was like no man there's nothing that goes there and i was like oh okay so yeah that's my bad anyways we just put the wastegate back together as you saw everything's good in the neighborhood uh these aren't tightened i loctited all of these plugs so they're good that's what the instructions said to do Instead of using that top one, I'm using this port. Same thing, it'll be uh, less cumbersome and out of the way because that would probably touch the shifter cables if I put it on the very top. So it's all fine and dandy. Uh, we're not gonna be running water cooling. Uh, fabricator even said we didn't need to because it's not like full blown like road racing for like 40 minutes straight beating the balls off the car. So we're not gonna do uh, water cooling, just air. So yeah, this is all set up now. So we can go ahead and uh, throw this in the car. See how it looks, finally. All right, so that was a little bit more of a pain than I expected. Um, so what happens is because the spring is actually in the housing now, the uh, little uh, seal, that little ring that's in there, it like slightly pushes up so that, that way when you mount it, it really does create that airtight seal. So I had to like try to force this up while trying to get this clamp on. Absolute nightmare, but it's on. 
And yeah, so these are the two. This is going to be the lower, this will be the upper little uh, barb fittings that came with the wastegate. We're going to use those. Um, if you come over here, you got a little diagram. So this part of the Mac valve is going to go to the top of wastegate. All I need is a T fitting, and then I can send some vacuum line to the bottom. And then this will go to this fitting right here. So all that's really left is to figure out the wiring on the three port. One of them's ground, the other goes to the ECU. Issue is, the Mac valve is literally not labeled at all. I don't even know where I put it, but here it is. There's nothing, like they're both black. There's no markings or anything on the uh, the boost controllers. So I already got some vacuum line from uh, AutoZone, stuck them on there. So yeah, just about ready to go here pretty soon. If not today, we're gonna mount the turbo up per, uh, semi-permanently. Then I can get this installed. We already put the fitting on, used some Teflon, just tighten it down. And uh, yeah, now I just need to figure out because I'm missing, where are they at? There we go. I'm missing one washer and one nut, which really sucks because the stuff's expensive. Problem is these don't even like, fits there, almost fits there, but with the washer it won't fit there. It's just absolute nightmare. So we have to like shave these down. Luckily we have a vise, so we can do that now. But yeah, it's coming together. I've decided that I'm gonna try to piece together the CX Sidewinder intercooler kit, see if I can make it work. Uh, might have to cut some stuff up, you never know, but let's just see and try and see if we can make kind of a half-ass intercooler piping setup so I can avoid paying somebody to do it for at least a little bit. But yep, that's the game plan. All right, so we got these uh, banjo things tightened down. Put a zip tie over this vacuum line just to make sure. Hopefully they don't melt off, but this is all said and done. I got it coming around here, and then this is all just temporary. There's too much line because I might have to cut it, and we have the three port right here. So the top, which is, I'm sorry, yeah, this is the top, so this is the bottom. So the bottom line, which is this long one, we need to cut and add a T. And then at some point in there, or I could just have a little uh, port come out of the uh, intercooler piping. That'll be where I get the boost gauge line from. So yeah, or I can just tee it into that whole system. And it'll be the same thing. So yeah, we're making making some progress. I still need to figure out how I want to mount this. I'm not totally decided on that yet. Um, I was thinking back in that corner maybe, or I could just tie it to like there or something. I don't know. Before we can even mount this, we have to figure out how we're gonna wire it, which is gonna probably be in a later video. But yeah, I think next what we're gonna work on is uh, getting this turbo mounted because I need to modify these washers and nuts so they fit on the housing. And then maybe we can get the uh, turbo thrown on for good there, it'd be pretty nice. All right, so actually I lied. Before we mess with the uh, turbo hardware, we are gonna see if my Vibrant kit fits or not. And if it doesn't, I'll let you guys know so you don't waste money like I did. But if it doesn't fit, we have a bunch of more drain line that I picked up today. So we're gonna see if uh, the stuff that Vibrant fits, or the stuff that Vibrant came with fits. But as you can see, it actually snakes down there pretty good. I don't know if you guys can probably see that too well, but this is it right here, this is the drain. The thing I'm worried about is it kind of touches so loud Dean just started his car and that sucker is loud on cold starts so all right so sorry if you guys can't see much I'm not getting back out to get a camera so the line snakes down through here over the trans and this is the fitting that's on the end of it and as you can see just barely it does not fit it reaches there but as you can see it's a little cockeyed so we just if I try to screw that in it's just gonna cross the red so yeah, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to cut that second line we got, I think. But let me uh, shut the camera off and then I'm gonna mess with it some more and see if I can make it fit. So I'll be right back. Yep, so uh, 
No matter what I did, couldn't get it to fit properly. So that's okay. That's why I bought this line. Uh, I've measured it with my eyeballs. I think if we go about probably about that much further, around an inch, inch and a half longer, we should be good. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the old one, lay it up against this one, remeasure it, give it a couple more inches, and then uh, I'll cut it up. All right, so got our line measured out. I'm going to measure it a little bit more just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it and uh, see where we land with uh, installing the new line. Hopefully it fits because... <laughs> If I screw this up, I don't have enough left, so. All right, that's one line down. This is from the first time we built it. So the vise actually does a little bit better job of not scuffing it up and using pipe pliers, but one side down, one more to go. All right, there it is. Ready to be thrown back on the car. Hopefully uh, I'm not stupid and uh, screwed it up. <laughs> We're about to find out though. All right, turbo is back mounted. Uh, this nut's super tight, so turbo doesn't move. And uh, the drain line's in, so pray for your boy. I don't know why I'm still wearing these. Pray for your boy, I'm about to go under there, make sure it fits. Please fit. <laughs> All right, well, as you can see, it fits. Honestly, I might've made it a little too long because now it sticks way out here. Hopefully it doesn't get in the way of anything. Um, I can kind of turn it more this way, which I'm about to do. Because as I tightened it, the line rotated that way, so, yeah. Alright, it's tight. We officially have an oil drain line, which is awesome. So, thank God that's out of the way. I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to get the drain line to fit underneath the turbo because of the wastegate, but thankfully it's... Uh, there's just enough space, so. All right, check it out. That's how I rerouted the uh, two vacuum lines on the wastegate. So they're out of the way of everything. They're not getting pinched or touching the oil drain line, which is good because I was worried about these melting. Still a little bit worried about them getting uh, destroyed by heat just because of how close it is to the exhaust housing. But I think we'll be okay. Um, I mean, if they're not okay, then <laughs> I'll heat wrap them, but I'm probably going to not do that for now. But yeah, I think the next thing that I'm going to real quickly do is install the feed line and uh, see how I can get that kind of oriented, oriented. And I need to tighten it on the uh, other side down on the block or head. My bad. It comes from the head. So at least I think it does. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> But yeah, once I get that done, um, the only thing really left to do turbo-wise is to modify the rest of the nuts and washers to fit. And then I am going to be missing one. So I'm going to have to probably, I'm just going to go to Lowe's, cut my losses, and find a uh, nut and washer. Hopefully they have Encana washers somewhere. And then uh, we'll replace that fourth one that I can't find anymore. It's pretty uh, disappointing, but it is what it is. So got to make it work somehow. All right, check it out. Feeds attached. That means officially the oil system is pretty much done. Um, that means we can eventually go ahead and add oil to the motor. Before we do any of that though, I wanna make sure that the drain line doesn't get messed with by when we put the subframe in. Uh, we should be putting it in very soon because just about everything is tightened up and all that good stuff. So <sighs> yeah, it's all, it's coming together for sure. Super excited, man. But uh, anyways, I'm going to hop under the car real quick 
and tighten the under end of the feed, make sure it's still good to go. All right, well, we were not we were unable to get to shaving these uh, nuts and washers to fit the rest of the turbo. We'll get to it next video, but I think that's gonna do it for today. It's starting to get dark. Got a lot done. Oh yeah. So if you guys wanna subscribe, you know where it's at. <laughs> Man, I feel stupid every time I say that, but. <laughs> Please, give us something. <laughs> <laughs> give us some likes, give us some comments, whatever y'all want. Any, uh, you know, you want to call us idiots, that's cool. We definitely fuck some stuff up every now and then, so, yeah. yeah. We're going to be doing more soon, so keep an eye out. After this car finishes, we'll start another project, or we'll work on my car, so. Yep. All right, see you next time.